I'd like to take some time to talk about oxidation and reduction reactions with respect to organic chemistry. In Gen Chem, you talked about oxidation and reduction reactions in the sense that the oxidation process was a loss of electrons and the reduction process was a gain of electrons. And you talked about this in the context of metals. In organic chemistry, we take it a little bit more literally. And if we're going to say that a certain atom of carbon is going to be oxidized, we mean to say that the number of carbon oxygen bonds is going to increase. So one or more carbon oxygen bonds will be formed in the new molecule if we're to say that that carbon atom is oxidized. So this video is going to be just an introduction to oxidation and reduction reactions in the sense of organic chemistry. So we're going to dive right in. And again, oxidation is often just known as the creation of new carbon-oxygen bonds. And this is often done with an oxidizing agent called PCC. Okay, PCC stands for pyridinium chlorochromate. So I'm going to draw that for you really quick. Just think of a protonated pyridine. All right, that is a nitrogen. Let's see if I can erase that and not be too atrocious. And it turns out I can. Cool. And then it is surrounded by that second word, chlorochromate. So thinking back to Gen Chem, CRO3, Cl minus. And chromium is often found in a lot of oxidizing agents. And it's really for better or for worse, and mostly for worse, because the great, you know, chromium is a great oxidant, but the problem is once you're done with your reaction, now you have to get rid of it. Yikes. Um, so anyway, that was just a sidebar. Um, so primary alcohols are oxidized with pyridinium chlorochromate, or as we just say, PCC. And PCC is how I'll note it from here on out. But anyway, so primary alcohols are oxidized to aldehydes with PCC. So we're going to draw a reaction arrow. We're going to react it with PCC. No need to learn the mechanism. For this process, we know that the primary alcohol is oxidized to the aldehyde. Make sure we didn't lose any carbons. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Still have our oxygen. Still have our hydrogen. It's just now we have an additional carbon-oxygen bond. So that is an oxidation process. Moving on down to the next way that primary alcohols can be oxidized. And these are the only ones that can be oxidized in more than one way at this point that you know of at least. Um, and we can put it under some pretty harsh conditions with potassium dichromate, sulfuric acid, and water. Um, so I'm just going to write that in over the reaction arrow, a little gen chem review, potassium dichromate, and then we're just going to put some aqueous sulfuric acid. And that is going to give us a carboxylic acid. So again... Right, so here is our oxidized product. Make sure we didn't lose any carbons. We had one, two, three, four, five. We have one, two, three, four, five, so we're good. And as you can see, we started with one carbon-oxygen bond, and now we have one, two, and three. So those harsh conditions really cause for a further oxidation, or that carbon to go into one higher oxidation state than with PCC. The next thing I want to talk about is secondary alcohols. So secondary alcohols are always oxidized to form ketones. And this is a, a process that is independent of the oxidizing agent used. So if we oxidize, whoops, we want the pen with PCC, we're going to get this. If we oxidize with potassium dichromate, some aqueous sulfuric acid, we get this. Whoops. Sorry, and I'm putting those uh, lone pairs of electrons in so it's a little bit easier to see formal charge. So ultimately, there's no reason that you would use the harsh conditions of the potassium dichromate and aqueous acid. You could just use the pyridinium chlorochromate, PCC, um, which is a much, much easier substance to get your hands on and much more friendly to use. 
Tertiary alcohols do not undergo an oxidation because there isn't a carbon-hydrogen bond to break. Uh, and this means that there's no carbon-oxygen bond that can form, right? So I didn't say this on the last page because I wanted to just go over that at this point. So when we're looking at this molecule right here, right, and I'm actually going to move my PCC arrow because you have to remember on this carbon right here, right, there are also two hydrogens, right? The carbon-hydrogen bond, one of these carbon-hydrogen bonds, doesn't matter which, okay, is the one that breaks, that supplies the electrons for this carbon-oxygen bond. So tertiary alcohols obviously have no carbon-hydrogen bond surrounding, and a carbon-carbon bond is not going to break to form another carbon-oxygen bond. It's just too unfavored in terms of energy change. So we could put PCC, and we could say, so I'll draw it a little bit better, no reaction. And I abbreviate reaction RXN, if you haven't watched my videos yet. The next thing I want to talk about is reduction. So just, just a, one last note about oxidations. Um, we're not really going to go over the mechanism for oxidations for the purposes of your undergraduate organic education. Um, mechanisms for these things is, is, is a little bit higher level of a thing. I mean, obviously, you, it's possible you could be expected. Of course, check with your institution or your individual instructor for more information on the mechanism for oxidation reactions in organic chemistry. But I'd like to get on to reductions, and these we will talk about the mechanisms for. Um, we're going to talk about three reducing agents today. We're going to talk about sodium borohydride, lithium aluminum hydride, and dibal. Um, but before we get there, um, so we need to now go the other way. So we went from primary, al primary alcohol to aldehyde. Now we know, need to go from aldehyde to primary alcohol. Wow, a lot of the same type of sound there. Um, our reducing agent is going to be sodium borohydride. So we are just going to draw this over here. There's going to be a sodium cation, and there's going to be a tetravalent boron, which is fine. It has an octet. That's great. Um, and these boron-hydrogen bonds are really long and not too, too strong since it is now tetravalent. So when we end up doing the reduction, we're going to see in the mechanism when we do it in a moment that one of these bonds is actually going to attack the carbonyl. But let's just draw the overall product. And when we're drawing reductions, it is very important that you have these one and twos, and I'll actually draw my arrow a little bit more clearly for you, explain it as I'm writing it. So when I'm drawing my arrow, I'm going to put my first step of adding my reducing agent. So I'm going to put my sodium borohydride. And then in a second step, in workup, I'm going to add water. And this is going to quench the rest of my reducing agent. And it's going to allow me to perform the workup on my reaction. So when we do this, we are going to get a product very similar to what we saw in the first part of the video. So we are going to just get a primary alcohol. So let's look at the mechanism. Okay, remember we do mechanisms with full arrows to represent electron pushing and to see how our reactions are going to take place. So for the purposes of our mechanism, um, you really only need the borohydride portion of the sodium borohydride. You do not need the little sodium cation. I will draw it in any way for your viewing pleasure. <laughs> but so now we are going to draw our mechanism. So what's going to happen is from the middle of one of these boron hydrogen bonds, or boron hydride if you so choose, um, either one is, is acceptable in this context. Um, this, from the center of one of these bonds, we're going to attack the carbonyl carbon, and one of the carbonyl bonds is going to break. So one of the CO bonds is going to break. Right. So a line from the center of this bond up to this carbon and from the center of one of these bonds up to the oxygen, showing that there's going to be a lone pair up on the oxygen. So next step of our mechanism, right, and I'm, I've drawn this hydrogen in here so we can kind of see that it's staying, 
Um, but nonetheless, now we have only a single bond. We have an alkoxide up here. What's going to happen now is, as we see in our reaction, when we wrote the overall process up here, our second step is going to be we're going to add some water. So this is going to do exactly what you think it is. So we'll draw some water. And our carbonyl, or our original carbonyl carbon, I guess, now has this alkoxide up here. And this wants to be protonated, right? And so our proton source is obviously going to be our water. So our oxygen, one of the lone pairs, is going to take a hydrogen from the water. And then you're going to want an arrow from the center of that oxygen-hydrogen bond right here to break off and show those electrons coming onto the oxygen. So we can draw our final product. Still a hydrogen down here. And now we have a primary alcohol. And that's the same as what I drew up here. Up here I just did not include the hydrogen. And I like to draw in the OH bond to show that it is there. So that is the reduction of aldehydes to primary alcohols with sodium borohydride. The next reducing agent I'd like to talk about is Dibal. And Dibal, <laughs> uh, oddly enough, so it sounds fun, um, but in theory, it is one that you need to kind of remember the structure. So dibutylium, di, excuse me, diisobutyl aluminum hydride is what Dibal stands for. And Dibal looks like this. So, that is what dibal looks like. So we're going to take this dibal, and we're going to use it to reduce an acid chloride to an aldehyde. So we're going to write our overall reaction. I'm just going to write dibal over my arrow. You know what that means. This dash, dash H is pretty implied, considering that's just kind of how it goes. Um, but if your pr particular professor likes that you write dibal H, go ahead and make sure you do that to obtain full credit on, on homework problems and exams and etc. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and draw in our aldehyde product. There we go. Done. Very cool. So how does this work? This works a little bit differently than our step from above. Notice that there's no, and, I'll, and actually for the sake of consistency, we're going to put our 1, 2, H2O down here because you will need it in the workup. So what we're going to do is we are now going to go ahead and draw our mechanism. So we're going to copy the dibal structure from up here. I'm going to redraw it. But I'm going to draw it in a little bit more convenient of a way for my reaction. Cool. So what we're going to do is again this aluminum hydrogen bond now. So now it's not boron hydrogen, but it's aluminum hydrogen bond is going to come up and attack the carbonyl carbon. So again, this is an arrow from the center of the bond to the carbonyl carbon. Standard procedure, once you attack that carbonyl carbon, one of the carbon oxygen bonds needs to break. So now we have this. Right, so I've actually just shown, so I've gone to the, the purpose here Remember that there is a hydrogen on this carbon. In this case, I've just gone to the point of showing it. This is going to make a little bit more sense on how we get that aldehyde product. So we have an oxygen there, and then we have a chlorine down here. Remember that we started with an acid chloride. Right, so if you think back to your undergraduate organic, organic one reactions, this is a pretty okay leaving group, right? It's fairly stable as an anion. And that's exactly what it's going to do. So you know how we just broke this carbonyl bond right here? And I shouldn't say carbonyl bond. I should say carbon-oxygen bond right here. We're actually going to reform it. One of these lone pairs of electrons is going to come back down, reform that bond, and the chlorine is going to pop off as a leaving group. And I'll actually draw that last arrow a little bit more directly to show that the chlorine is leaving. So 
so we get our aldehyde product. Cool. So the last thing that I want to talk about is ketone reduction. Okay, ketone reduction. So you'll notice a pattern, right? So aldehydes reduce to primary alcohols. Ketones, on the other hand, will reduce to secondary alcohols, right? Fancy that. So we're actually going to use another reducing agent here. It's called lithium aluminum hydride. We're going to draw it over here. We have a lithium cation hanging out. And we now have this aluminum back with these aluminum hydrogen bonds. Aluminum being tetravalent means it is going to have a negative charge. Recalling those periodic table trends from Gen Chem. Uh, if you don't know them at this point, please take the time to learn them. It will make your process through organic very, very much easier. So ultimately, with a lithium aluminum hydride, we're going to reduce our ketone down to a secondary alcohol. So if we want to write the overall reaction here, we're going to put step one, lithium aluminum hydride. We're going to put step two, water. And we're going to draw our secondary alcohol. Or you can just draw it like such. I like to draw in the lone pairs just to be very specific. So let's look at the mechanism. So again, this is going to be very similar to our sodium borohydride reduction of the aldehyde. We're going to draw in a tetravalent aluminum. Maybe for your viewing pleasure, I'll draw the lithium. And the same process is from the center of one of these aluminum hydrogen bonds. And I'm actually going to erase I'm usually a very big fan of formal charge. I'm going to put it on that side just so it doesn't get muddled up with my arrows. So from the center of an aluminum hydrogen bond, carbon oxygen bond is going to break. Lone pair is going to go over to the oxygen. So now we have this. So step two, we're bringing in some water. So we'll write in some water. Whoops. And that oxygen is going to steal a proton from that water. There we go. And we are going to have our secondary alcohol, or you can draw it as I don't mind either way. Cool. So I want to talk about one more point about the reduction of ketones before I conclude this video. There's obviously um, more to talk about about uh, oxid oxidation and reduction processes in organic chemistry. Again, this is just an introduction. But I'd like to close out by talking about how the reduction of ketones can sometimes get complicated. Um, so non-symmetrical non ketones is going to result in the formation of a new chiral carbon once it is reduced, right? So the carbon... This, this carbonyl carbon right here, once this is reduced, is going to become chiral. And you'll see why when we draw it through the mechanism. But just so we have the process down, we're just going to write through the reaction, overall reaction one. Excuse me. Just got to zoom in. Lithium aluminum hydride. And we're going to do some water. And this is going to give us, like it says, a racemic mixture of products. So this is an interesting one. And when we will draw through the mechanism as well. But So again, remember, a racemic mixture is a mixture of both enantiomers of a single product. And I guarantee you that is the most detailed wedge I have ever drawn. Cool. So how do we get this? So let's look again at this mechanism for the reaction. This is going to be the same way, right, that it happens in other reactions. So we're going to have our aluminum hydride, and I'm actually going to draw it in black because that's what I've been doing. Right, and for your viewing pleasure, there's some lithium. Wow. <laughs> We're going to attack the carbonyl carbon. Carbon-oxygen bond is going to break. And this is purely for the sake of drawing through the mechanism. 
right? So now we have this alkoxide right here. That means that in our workup, when we have some water, the oxygen is going to steal a proton from the water. Whoops. Let's hit the pen, not the undo button. And we are going to get a racemic mixture. Okay, so remember, we could technically draw in, right, since this is a racemic mixture, remember that hydrogen is also a substituent on this carbon. Right, so you don't need to draw the hydrogen in, I just wanted to do that so that you could see how that looked. Whew. So anyway, that concludes the notes that I have for you on just the introduction to oxidation and reduction in the organic chemistry context and our talk today about some mechanisms of those reduction processes. I hope this video helped and for more help, obviously, if you attend my institution and I have the privilege of working with you, please feel free to come and see me. If you attend another institution, best of luck to you, and I hope more of my videos are able to help you understand your chemistry concepts better. Thank you.